Hey, what's up garden friends? Jeff here, how's everybody doing? I uh, hope you're good, I am great. Time to talk about the sago palm. I've had several requests, it's just kind of taken me a little bit of time to get around to doing it. It's a little bit complicated, I'll explain why in a little bit. I went ahead and I picked up a little one to use for this video, even though I do have a rather large sago palm, but I'll talk about why it's not going to be in this video when I get to that part of the video. The sago palm, not really a palm, Psychus revolta, hardy zones eight and up, part to full sun, well-drained soil, preferably slightly on the acidic side and toxic. Not a palm tree, it is a cycad. The difference here being that this produces a cone. A large cone comes growing out of the center and little bitty like berries sort of seeds come out of there. Uh, every single part of this plant is toxic. It's something to keep away from children, pets, any curious mouths. Keep them away from this plant, very poisonous. In fact, become a problem I know down in like the Panama City area of Florida that there are some dogs getting really sick and even dying from the debris from the sago palms that's all over people's yards and stuff like that. People's dogs are eating it. You don't even realize that it's there because it just looks like a chunk of wood or something like that. It's problematic. Dangerous plant as far as that's concerned. So I wanted to get that out of the way first. And now onto a lighter note, talk about the care. Sagos are fairly slow growers. At the high end, expect maybe three sets of leaves a year. Typically one to two is more common. New growth emerges out of the center up top, unfurls kind of like a fern a little bit. It's sort of fuzzy and soft as it comes out and hardens over a few days. And as time goes by, those will come down more and more flat around here. You can see they are a little bit spiky, so be careful when handling them. And from there, those will wear up and form a trunk. Easy to grow house plant. They don't require very much, really whether inside or outside. The main difficulties people have with them usually come down to things like deficiencies, temperatures, and pests. But when it just comes to situating them, indoors, bright, bright, bright light. It can be direct, doesn't have to be. As long as it's in a brightly lit room, it'll be okay. It needs several hours of that light though. Outdoors, same thing, part sun to sun, it'll be okay. You can have them in shade, but, or really part shade, not full shade, but they're going to stretch more and they're not going to look quite as nice. The more sun they get, the more compact their growth is going to be, the shorter the foliage is going to be. When it's really long and stretched out, that usually means that it's been reaching for light. It's stretching out for light. Sagos are cold hardy, zones eight and up. There have been some studies done. One was at uh, Miami University, University of Miami, I don't know, it was in Ohio. And they did plant these out in that zone six area and they survived winter with lots and lots and lots of mulch on top of them. They defoliated and did come back. So if you live south of zone eight or north, I should say, if you live in a more cold climate, you could give it a try in the ground, but I don't know, it's kind of some expensive dice to roll there. Hey, give it a shot though, that's all up to you. But as far as full hardiness goes, the plant's staying evergreen, zone eight and up. And that's warm zone eight, not like Seattle. They don't know how they do with the precipitation and whatnot there. They do like heat, they do well with heat. They're a great plant to trout if you live someplace like Arizona, the desert climate, they'll do well there. Also fine down around the Gulf, they can take the precipitation, the rain and everything, just as long as the soil drains well and they're not too crowded with a lot of other plants that can inhibit airflow. That could cause a problem in the ground, but it really shouldn't be too much of an issue. They can take a rocky, sandy soil or a nice organically rich soil. The growth is going to look better with a well-draining, organically rich potting mix. In a pot, a well-draining soil, that should do the trick. You can use a palm and cactus mix. They'll do fine with that. Just like I've mentioned before, it shouldn't stay wet for very long. I like to let them dry out in between waterings. Indoors during the winter time, I like to let them dry out 100% between waterings. If that seems too risky for you, you don't have to do that, but make sure that the top of the soil is dry before watering again, just to be safe. Sagos do need to be fertilized, but it only in the spring and summer, in the fall and winter, not so much. If this is a houseplant for you, I wouldn't fertilize it at all in the fall and winter. Be very careful. In fact, it can, it can cause a lot of problems if you do fertilize these when they're indoors and they're not in active growth. So only fertilize when temperatures are warm and the plants growing. And outdoors, it's really the same thing if you don't live someplace that's truly a tropical climate where it's going to stay in active growth all year. You don't need to fertilize during the winter months. With my sagos, I make sure to fertilize them with a balanced fertilizer. So I usually use a palm fertilizer and I will dilute about probably two tablespoons of Epsom salt 
into a watering can and water that in once a month. The reason I do that is it just kind of helps them out a little bit when it comes to sun scorch because sometimes when I've had them inside, move them back outside, they're more delicate, more sensitive to the sunlight and more prone to scorching, to the leaves bleaching out or fronds, I should say. During the summer months, when I have mine outside, they get watered on a much more regular basis. I mean, a lot, actually. We've had tons and tons and tons of rain this year. They're fine with it. The soil's draining well. I don't have any mulch or anything. I'm talking about the other one that's not on camera. The mulch and stuff isn't piled up around the trunk. You want your mulch to be out like a donut, not like a volcano, like a donut, so that it's not pressed up against there. It can cause issues with rot. Potted ones, they're going to be watered even more frequently, especially if it's in a nice, well-draining soil. Specifically, fertilizer-wise, sometimes I will just blend in some Osmocote, or really just any all-purpose fertilizer that has a decent amount of micros and macros. They seem to like seaweed fertilizer. It helps with the foliage, keeping things nice and green. I mentioned that I'll do the Epsom salt about once a month. And an all-purpose palm fertilizer works well. Right now I'm just using the Espoma palm tone because it's really the only thing I have access to. But I've used others like the Jobs. They have palm sticks and those seem to work well too. Or I think they're like palm and citrus, something like that. It has the manganese in it, which they appreciate. Again, I don't really need to repot mine, but I'll go ahead and just talk about some things to look out for when repotting your plant. So ways to know that it's time to repot the sago palm is gonna be one, you water it and it's not staying hydrated. If you start to see roots coming out the surface or out the bottom of the pot, that can mean it's time. And if it's been more than two years, go ahead and repot the plant. You don't necessarily have to bump it up in size if it doesn't need that, but just so that it has some fresh soil. And then when it's time to repot, it's a good idea to have a good close look at the roots. These roots right here, these are nice, healthy roots. They're firm. They're not flaccid. When you pinch them, they don't squeeze down. These are good roots. If the roots were more brown and they did squish out when being touched, those are dead roots. Cut those out. It doesn't need them. They'll just end up rotting and decaying and cause more problems. You don't need them in there. And like I mentioned, you can just use a palm cactus mix. It works fine. Sometimes I will amend the soils with some uh, lava rock. That seems to help with drainage an awful lot. It just doesn't need to be anything that's like a potting mix made for a moisture loving plant. Like they have some of those water wise mixes never use those those just spell disaster actually i pretty much if i do use a palming cactus mix for it the only one around my where that i can get a hold of is a miracle grow and it just doesn't dry out as quickly as i would like it to <laughs> for palm tree so especially not for cactus when i do use that i make sure to add in perlite the lava rock and uh, anything else that's going to help kind of lift it up, fluff it up a little bit, or I'll just use a standard potting mix and do the same thing. I'll add some sand, some lava stone, some perlite. The main thing is that I want sharp drainage. So when I water the plant, the water doesn't just sit on top of the soil. It moves through the soil and out the bottom of the pot very quickly. I know I've said it a lot because it's important. Drainage is really important. So be sure to use a container that has holes in the bottom. That is very important. They don't like wet feet. This rot gets stinky and nasty. It's no fun. Okay, and now on to uh, things to look out for. Like I should have mentioned, they're not particular about humidity. So that's one of the reasons that they're great to have inside the house because they're not going to throw a fit if it's not really, really humid. If you start to notice brown tips on the foliage, that can mean that maybe the air is a little bit too dry or that they're being severely underwatered. Same thing with yellowing tips, but when that yellow goes all the way in or all the way down the length of the frond, then that can mean that it's being severely overwatered. So if you start to see something like that, check, make sure the soil's not wet, that the, that the water's draining out really well. So it's kind of a process of elimination. That's one of the big things I hear about with sago palms. The questions I usually get are about the browning foliage and yellowing foliage, and there are so many reasons that that can happen. For one, if you're growing these outdoors, pay attention to what time of year it is. If you're noticing Noticing that you have browning yellowing foliage and it's like, I don't know, April? That's probably cold damage, potentially, if you've had a cold winter. You can cut off all the undesirable brown and yellow fronds. They don't need them. It's not doing anything for the plant, so you can get rid of them. It's not a big deal. But if this is growing in the ground for you and you're doing everything the way you're supposed to be, so nothing's making sense, why is the foliage brown? Why is it yellowing? Think about things like deficiencies. Maybe consider getting your soil tested. Uh, you can do it yourself, there are kits. Test the pH. 
they do prefer to be slightly more on the acidic side with their soil. So if the soil is really, really alkaline and then anything below 5.5 is gonna be too acidic. When the pH is really off with soil, it affects how plants absorb nutrient. So uh, maybe you've been fertilizing it, nothing's happening. Your soil's good, you're watering it, it just, it doesn't look good. They're still yellowing, still browning, the plant's just unhappy. So maybe the pH is off, maybe it's causing the plant to not be able to take up the nutrients that it needs to. So that's something to look out for. And there really, there are lots and lots of reasons that the foliage can start to go on these. When it starts to go in the winter, pay attention to temperature, make sure you haven't been fertilizing it or overwatering it because they will throw an absolute fit, drop their foliage and start to rot and die. If it's during the growing season and it's just not making sense, consider sunlight, how much water the plant's getting, and nutrient. If the foliage is discolored and you haven't been fertilizing the plant, maybe it needs to be fertilized. It probably needs to be fertilized. Okay, now the big thing, main thing, pests. The reason my big sago palm isn't here in this video is because it is currently living in a 45 gallon trash bag with some pesticide. Soft scale, hard scale, black scale, scale mealybugs, or should, I should say scale and mealybugs, I don't want to confuse anyone, they're different things. They love sago palms. I don't know why, the foliage is really hard, it's not typically the kind of thing that you would think that scale would be really into, but oh my goodness they get on these plants like crazy, which is why mine is in a trash bag with some pesticides right now. It's on a little vacation. It's gone away, it's at the spa, she's recovering. If you have this indoors, a lot easier to handle as long as it's a smaller plant. You can just take it to the shower, take it to the sink, wash it off very, very heavily, make sure to get into all of the little crevices. The problem is, see, it can be hard to get everything out. There's lots and lots of crevices inside the trunks, undersides the fronds, so it's going to take repetition to eliminate that problem, but give them a heavy rinse and just wash all the stuff off. Spray them down with neem. That's usually a good place to start. There are other things you can do, homemade recipes with like peppermint oil, things like that. Uh, you have to pull those up on your own, find out what works for you. Neem is safe though, it's okay. I'm not particularly fond of the smell. Some people really enjoy it, not so much me, but you know, to each his own. Reapply as necessary, really probably I would say you're gonna to wanna to soak the plant, like just spray it down to the neem is running off the foliage, probably weekly for several weeks. And you may have to repeat the rinsing it off in the sink or in the shower thing. That's the main thing with these guys are deficiencies and bugs. Those are the biggest issues. Otherwise, as long as you have some light for them, they're pretty simple to grow. Like I always say in the videos, it's pretty much impossible to remember absolutely everything. I'm sure I've forgotten a ton of things. Comment down below any tips, tricks, Anything you need to add or correct, obviously, put that down below in the comments. And just say hi, I love talking to everybody. There are a lot of really cool varieties of cycads. The Cycus revolta, sago palm, just the most common. Probably the easiest to grow, easiest to propagate, really. It's one of the reasons for that. There are others that do grow faster, though. I hope everybody's doing well. Don't forget to leave the video a thumbs up. Always appreciate it. Subscribe as well and hit that notification bell because I upload multiple times a week. That way you'll know when new videos come out. And I have all my social media linked down below in the description. You can follow me and we can look at each other's pictures. It's a good way to get a hold of me if I'm not seeing comments. Sometimes comments don't always come through. So you can hit me up on there. I'm on Instagram like far more than anything else. And as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.